We had already studied the molecular orbital theory of uh, sigma bond formation and pi bond formation in octahedral complexes. Now let's move on to the tetrahedral complexes uh, and we can also study the sigma as well as the pi bond formation in the case of tetrahedral complexes also. And it is a time to remind you all that the in, te in tetrahedral complexes there are four ligands and if we place it in a cube there will be uh, uh, the ligands are occupied in alternative positions of a cube. And therefore, none of the uh, none of the ligands and the metal orbitals are in um, direct combination, or they are not directing towards each other. And however, uh, the sigma bond formation and pi bond formations are having their own symmetries, and we shall study one by one. First, we shall move on to the sigma bond formation in the case of tetrahedral complexes. Now, uh, when we study of the study about the tetrahedral complexes, uh, the term G is omitted here, and it's not having a symmetry. It's not a not a centrosymmetric molecule like that of octahedral complexes. And whenever we refer the symbols, we will be calling it as either A A1, or we can take it as T2 or E or T1 like that. And therefore, the G term is omitted here. Therefore, here also the A is representing non-degenerate d orbitals and T is representing <coughs> the triply degenerate orbitals and it could be dxy, dy, and dzx and the same symmetry is also utilized for 3p orbitals also in the case of uh, uh, the tetrahedral complexes. Therefore, T2 symmetry is shared by the p as well as the 3d orbitals. Now, when it comes to E orbital or the E symmetry, it is referring to only two D of or D orbitals, one as dx square, y square, and the other one as dz square. Now, these four ligands in the case of sigma bond formation can again provide two electron each to the metal orbital. A total of eight electrons are contributed towards the sigma bond formation in the case of uh, tetrahedral complexes. Now we shall study what are the combinations required, what are the symmetries required for the formation of sigma bond formation in case of tetrahedral complexes. And from the group theory it was revealed that the better suited uh, uh, symmetries for sigma bond formations are A1 and T2. So here A1 is representing S orbital and the T2 is representing two of the orbitals, one as the three D, D orbitals as I said earlier, dxy, dy and dzx as well as the P orbitals. So it can also be utilized to explain why in case of tetrahedral complexes D is not a pure D electron or D is not having pure electrons. It's a it's having a mixed property from the p orbital also. The reason is that they are given with the same symmetry. Now, uh, the ligand combination is also providing the same symmetry and therefore, there will be a combination of A1 symmetry of S orbital of the metal ligand with the A1 symmetry of the ligand P sigma combination to give A1 bonding molecular orbital as well as A1 uh, anti-bonding molecular orbital. In a similar way, when it is considered the T2, which is representing the D as well as the P orbitals, uh, we can have the combination to get the three uh, molecular orbitals orbitals, one is the bonding uh, uh, T2 orbital, molecular orbital and the two are anti-bonding T2 molecular orbitals. Here there are combination of uh, three, two atomic orbitals from the metal, one atomic orbital from the ligand and combination would provide the same number of molecular orbital and therefore three molecular orbitals are formed, one is bonding and the two are the non-bonding molecular orbital. Now, uh, when we consider the metal, metal is also having in addition to this the E uh, symmetry. However, E symmetry is not at all utilized for the sigma bond formation and therefore we could say that E remains as the non-degenerate D orbital in the case of sigma bond formation in tetrahedral complexes. Now we shall study till what level these uh, 8 electrons that are uh, provided or generated from the 4 ligands are filled. Now, the first one being the A1, it accommodates the two electrons which are given by uh, the um, uh, ligand as well as from the metal. And the next symmetry that is T2 and that will be provide, uh, that will be accommodating the six electrons. Therefore, the eight electrons are filled up to the T2 uh, bonding molecular orbital level. Now, when it comes to this crystal field theory explanation in the case of MO theory, we could say that the electrons which were uh, previously present in the metal D orbitals now are distributed between the anti-bonding E orbital as well as the T2 star or the T2 star anti-bonding molecular orbital. And therefore, these two metal orbitals are meant to 
contain I um, mean to have the pure, uh, pure D electrons. However, since E is a non bonding it is considered as the uh, orbital which consists of only the D electrons and there is no mixed character from the P orbital. However, when it goes to the T2 star because T2 star is the combination from the P orbital as well as the ligand orbital, we can see that uh, this T2 star will be having the characteristics from both the P and D. Therefore, in tetrahedral complexes, whenever we consider the transitions, we cannot say that it is a pure DD transition because it is also having characteristic of P and therefore, the P and D are mixed together and this is not explained in the case of uh, crystal field theory where we call it as a limitation of crystal field theory because crystal field theory just assumes that the both T2 as well as sorry the both E as well as the T2 they are having uh, the same symmetry uh, sorry they are having the electrons of only the metal and not having any uh, on, only the D orbitals or the D electrons and it is not having any P character but it is explained from the MO theory that it is having the mixed characters of P and D. So, therefore, uh, here in the case uh, it is the E2 T2 star which is the uh, crystal field splitting and however, that crystal field splitting from E2 T2 star is very less. We can see from the uh, PPD that it is showing a very lesser gap between E and T2 star. Therefore, most of the ligands of sorry most of the tetrahedral complex or we can say all the tetrahedral complexes are high spin complexes. Reason is again they are having a little gap and therefore electrons can jump from lower energy to higher energy level. So, this is about the sigma bond formation the tetrahedral complexes and the same could be explained for the pi bond formation in the case of the tetrahedral complexes. So, in case of pi bond formation again uh, each ligand will be providing two p pi orbitals which are perpendicular to each other mutually and in other case we are they are together perpendicular to the p sigma orbitals of the metal. So, uh, each ligand can provide uh, two ligand uh, sorry two p pi orbitals and therefore total of eight p pi orbitals are provided from the four ligands. Now, we shall see what are the symmetries required for the formation of pi bond formation in uh, the molecular orbital theory. So, from the group theory it is said that the better combinations required for the pi bond formations are T1, T2 and E symmetries. However, when we look into the metal combinations, in case of metal there is no symmetry with the T1. So, when it comes to the E, of course it can be utilized because it is not used in the sigma bond formation. And when we say about the T2 symmetry, it is better suited for the sigma bond formation and it cannot be utilized for the pi bond formation again. Therefore, though the ligand combinations are providing all these three combinations or the, these three symmetries of T1, T2 and E, we will be having only E symmetry for the formation of pi bonding in the case of tetrahedral complexes. And therefore, uh, the combination of the E will be happening here. Therefore, the E representing the dx square, y square and dz square orbital of the metal combines or overlaps with the p pi combination, ligand combination of the symmetry E. And it provides two molecular orbitals, E bonding molecular orbital, other, other one as E anti bonding molecular orbital. Now, uh, if we consider the filling of the electrons here, so, we can also consider whether the ligand is having the vacant p orbital or uh, filled p pi orbital. So, it does not matter whether it is the filled or the vacant d orbital and when it is filled up to the levels, uh, we can have the two, uh, uh, two crystal fields splitting here. One is it can be E2 T2 star, other one is E star to T2 star. So, whether it is E2 T2 star or E star to T2 star, they are having the same uh, or uh, small energy gap and therefore, we can say the crystal phase splitting is less in this case of tetrahedral complexes and hence all the electrons can jump from lower energy to higher energy level irrespective of the ligands that is whether the ligand is strong ligand like cyanide or whether the ligand is uh, uh, weak ligand like that of halo ligands, it does not matter at all. All the electrons will be preferring to move on to the higher energy level. So, therefore, once all the electrons are filled according to Hund's rule, the pairing, uh, pairing of electrons takes place. And hence, we can say that here pairing energy is much higher than the crystal field splitting and hence the uh, complex is preferred to uh, attain a high spin configuration and this is the reason why the tetrahedral complexes why the tetrahedral complexes are 
uh, high spin complexes. Therefore, the pi and the sigma bonding uh, molecular orbital theory of the tetrahedral complexes better explains us why they prefer to go for high spin, why not the low spin complexes. And that concludes the uh, pi, pi bond formation and sigma bond formation in the case of the tetrahedral complexes. Thank you.